Hey everybody, welcome to Let's Play Rollers of the Realm. I'm Nye. This is, as the developer puts it, a pinball RPG. If that doesn't make sense to you, and it didn't to me when I first started playing, trust me, you'll notice in about two minutes exactly what it's talking about. I gotta say I love this game. I'm looking forward to sharing it with you, so let's start. Uh, the game's gonna immediately start with a cutscene as soon as I press arrest data, uh, erase data. There we go, I can talk. It's gonna start uh, cutting immediately. I'm gonna go silent because I actually do enjoy the voice acting in this game for the most part and let you guys experience the story. As legend would have it, three great warriors were granted immortality and immense power with which to rule our land. Yet as so often happens in our tales, an envious witch appeared. She cursed the three warriors and imprisoned them for eternity, slipping the land into endless conflict. Few believe this tale, but it is fitting of our realm. Conflict is endless, and there hasn't been a king or upstart that doesn't claim to be one of the three warriors incarnate. They always promise the same thing. A war on tyranny. <laughs> war is tyranny. It took my family. My village. My childhood. It's as if the war were declared on me. As if I were the witch. So here I am, rolling from town to town, in search of a little coin from the pockets of those who would profit in these times. Oh, so there's the starting story for us, which is already a little bit uh, interesting. They start us off pretty well. And now we get our pinball. The better pickings will be in town. We'll head for the gates. So the game starts us off with a little bit of story, giving us the story of, you know, the legends, the story of the three warriors. And also we get a, a really good idea of who our main character is. Now our main character is never named, she's just known as the Rogue. That's her in the upper left hand corner. And I really love her voice. Uh, all the voice acting, for the most part, there's one or two exceptions I'm not happy about. But all the voice acting, for the most part, is really done very well. We get, uh... At certain times, these little interludes where we're going to have actual voice acting and a little bit of dialogue that'll stop the action. I'll just be advancing those manually. You can advance them automatically, too. So this uh, is giving me the uh, instructions on how to play for the keyboard. I'm actually going to be using a controller because I think it fits a lot better. So you'll notice I have Rogue. So depending on uh, how you want to uh, play, you can play with the keyboard, you can play with your controller. It's automatically mapped to it if you're using an X input controller, which I appreciate. Uh, L and R, left bumper, right bumper, uh, forget what else. But those will activate your flippers. You'll notice that it's just like a normal pinball game. You have two main flippers and then also minor flippers all over the place. By either using A, like that, or by using your right control stick, you can cause, um, all right, that's enough. Or by using your right control stick, you can cause the uh, ball to uh, be launched. Off you go, lass. Don't need your lot around town. You'll also notice that there are normal stuff floating around. So there are people walking around. Now, that ball, that little orange ball that you see between the two portraits right now, that actually is my character. So that is the rogue. Uh, she is identified by the small orange ball. However, non-player characters so by which i by which i mean this guard and the humans that you see little peasants there below the uh uh or next to the cart right there are identified by actual figures you'll need to distract the guard so i can slip past you up for it boy and so the game introduces us to our first idea what we have to actually do in the game and so our first uh our first goal is to call dog, which is the rogue, the rogue special ability. It's talking to you about it down there. And we're going to call the dog and have the dog come and actually help us out. So, um, as this is letting you know, uh, that little green icon down there in the sewer, that's a, that little spot at the bottom of a pinball uh, board where you would lose your ball. Uh, green icon means that there's no threats right now. I can successfully lose the ball at any time I so choose and not suffer a penalty. Uh, there will be penalties for it later, and I'll talk to you about that in the future. Um, that you are actually allowed to do that with no problems, thankfully. Uh, so that's why I can just drop it with no problems and talk a little bit more about how the game progresses. So the game will give us, on any given board, some sort of objective. Something we need to do. And we will have to actually accomplish that by way of playing pinball. And as I said at the start, I am not good at pinball, so you're going to see me suck a lot. I hope you can deal with it, because I do that in any game anyways. 
Uh, we have uh, different characters that we'll be able to cycle through. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, talking about controls, which you see me doing right now, is I'm actually messing with my left control stick. That allows me to put touch on the ball and allow me to manually move it around the battlefield. That actually, or, well, whatever you want to call it, um, that actually does matter in a lot of cases. Uh, you um, you want to put touch on things so you can actually send the ball where you want it to go. And in some cases, you're sending it to get money. So you'll notice that I am actually building up gold by sending the ball places. Uh, and then in some cases, the uh, the interactives is going to get you mana, which is also important. Keep in mind, I am currently playing as the rogue, so when I hit any uh, human player, one of her abilities gets me gold, and uh, we do want to build some of that up, because gold is used a lot in the game for a variety of things, uh, as you'd expect for a somewhat RPG-style game. So, uh, we also can build up mana, and that's the... Yes, 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 leave me alone. Uh, that's the blue... Uh, um, not only the blue meter, but also the Excuse blue numbers me? you're seeing. And uh, mana is used to operate character's main ability. So in the case of the rogue, that is called dogs. Let's go ahead and uh, see what button was that. Let's launch and call dog is just trap that there real quick. Oh, I'm trying to remember which button. There we go. It's using A. Now you'll notice that little extra ball, the little multi ball, that is actually my dog. So, right now, I'm not actually in control of the multi-ball. That's something that uh, the game will not let me do right now, because I'm actually in an objective. But I can do it in the future. Let's go ahead and uh, see if we can launch ourselves up uh, into that little sewer right there. Actual sewer, not the uh, pinball concept of a sewer. Let me just see if I can... Just like that? No? I told you, I'm terrible at pinball. You're, you're going to be seeing a lot of this. Okay, I want to be going up there. There we go. Okay, so now I got into the sewer, and now I get to move to my next board. Now, that's one of the cool things that I like about Rollers of the Realm, is that there are multiple boards that you get to play with. And so, as you can see, uh, it's talking about moving the ball around, the little touch that I told you about earlier. Um, almost every board has kind of interactables, uh, things that you can do that are unique. So, for example, you notice that I activated those uh, torches there, and that is one of those unique things. And it, I find it very uh, cool that they have very much, um, yes, yes, yes. Let's go ahead and hit that right now because I do get a gold multiplier by picking up that charm. There are many different things you can activate, many different changes. This is a sleepy little place. You smell anything worth steaming, boy? And all of that, uh, tends to well, add up. Let's make this quick, then. We shan't wear out our welcome. This is actually a little cutscene, so I'm not in control of dialogue. So, I'll shut up so I'll let you guys hear it. Okay. So our new objective is to collect 400 gold. Uh, if we, as they're saying, if we touch any villager from behind, we will get gold. Uh, there's a key down there that I may want to actually look into picking up. Villagers will walk around. Uh, and that's where the real cool pinball aspect of this comes from. Because the game is uh, very clear about the fact that it is very much pinball. Pardon? And they, uh... Can I, can I just Pardon? keep doing this? I can. Neat. I didn't even yeah. know about that. Um, it is very much pinball. And so they use that concept of pinball to great effect... And lets you, you know, use bumpers and stuff like that in order to uh, launch around. That's not exactly where I want to go. Yes, it is. Never mind. I was trying to get that key so I can actually go get that treasure chest. So we just want to get collect 400 gold. There we go. We better head out. Problem is, heading out is going to be made a little bit difficult because stuff happens. Now, where did I? I put my horse. Now you'll notice that this is a, uh... Blacksmith wants you out of his town. And there we go. This is another ball, so that means this is a playable character. It's really always easy to figure it out. Every ball looks different. They all have different properties. We'll see a lot of that as time moves on. The blacksmith can go hang himself. I love this character. All right. Beat some sense into him, boys. Stand still, you very names. So. Ugh. What do you think, boy? Should we leave him? You can't hurt me. I just love that. You can't hurt me. Um, so you'll notice that... Oh, that's not what I want to do. I'm, try, I'm trying to get over to the left-hand side of the board so I can actually get that treasure chest that you see there. Come on. Let me... Ah! No, not what I want to do. Okay, so we just saw, and we're going to see a little more in a second. There we go. I got my 500 gold. Um, now you're going to see another aspect of the RPG here, and that is that I actually am dealing damage to these enemies, and, uh, the damage is... Leave the old drunk alone. There we go. Big talk for a street rat. 
We know what you're doing around town. The blacksmith will want to see you and that mutt. So, as I said, we, uh, we're, we're getting into a little bit of the actual RPG aspect, where here. by hitting enemies with my, uh, with my rogue here, I am actually dealing damage to them. Enemies do have health meters and all that that I have to uh, kind of keep track of. Now, the thing is, I don't. My, <laughs> my health is operated in an entirely different manner that we're not actually allowed to see on this board because uh, this board is meant to be kind of a learn how to play. But you'll notice that uh, my enemies are actual people. They're just kind of just pins on the board here that I get to deal with. Let's see if I get some uh, movement here. And uh, I just have to kind of deal with that. Now, the game is trying to get me to do something very specific, which I don't want to do because I know exactly how it ends. Unfortunately, it's not going to end until I do. Let's go ahead and launch the uh, dog there. Oh, well, what just happened? There we go. Okay, now, difference. Notice that the gutter is now red. So what that means is uh, it's letting me know that if I do happen to fall into the gutter with the rogue, very specifically, the dog doesn't count. But if I uh, fall into the gutter with the rogue, that's considered to be death by the game. The game hasn't let me know that yet because this section doesn't really matter. However, the dog fell in and that advanced the storyline. Any character that falls into the gutter is considered to be dead. No! Please don't! Take your grandpa and leave town. Your mutt stays with us. The blacksmith fancies dog meat. The art style is very weird in some of these. Um, sometimes good, sometimes bad. I'm not sure how I like the art style of the guy in the middle, but it does show him to be a bit of a, you know, bit of a jerk. So you notice the level is not actually over. I am still very much in control. Uh, we did get to safety now. <coughs> Okay, so it wants me to get my ball to that spot. What were you thinking mouthing off to those thugs? They insulted my honor. What honor? You think you're a knight or something? And we get introduced to our new character. Where's your family, child? My dog is all the family I have. Where does this blacksmith live? And just some more character development for our road. They'll kill you. You weren't so cautious when your honor was on the line. Where did he take my dog? And we also get some a little bit of a... Uh, Personality for the night Off himself. Down into his territory. I'll take you, milady. I think I can do without your help. It would be my honor to reunite you with your family. Honor's kind of a big deal. All right, but try not to throw up on me. And that didn't take all that long. So we have just unlocked the knight. And they make it very clear how his ball works. So he's a very high defense. He's got a very large ball. And this means he can't be knocked around very much by other things, by, uh, um, random things that's kind of his uh, that's kind of the thing of the large ball but the problem is because he's very large he's very heavy i can't maneuver him very much so it's gonna be a lot more of my pinball abilities which as i've already stated i'm not very good at uh in melee he deals medium damage the uh rogue deals low damage but she has backstab uh if i hit an enemy from the back i do deal more damage passive abilities parry uh so he doesn't get knocked back very uh well by enemies and his special ability is shield, which protects the sewer. We'll see that in just a minute. Uh, we don't really want to progress to the next level all that much. We want to explore a little bit more, and mostly just so I can see if I can get a little bit more money. Um, I'm going to want as much as I can. Get out Let's see. Will it let me, uh, will it let me do this right now? No, I don't have that ability yet. Okay. Uh, the only problem is the game does not really want me to do what I'm trying to do. It doesn't want me to be able to mess around. It wants me to go to the next level. I just want to, you know, you'll notice in the lower left I have... There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Didn't I unlock something? I think I unlocked something. You notice I have 2096 gold. I'd like to see if I can get a little bit more. Left, please. Thank you. Oh, have I soaked everything I can? I think I might have soaked everything I can. Yeah, I've done it all. Okay. Let's go get that jewel right there. Nope. No. Give me that. That's what I want. Unfortunately, that gold charm's not going to do anything for me because we're at the end. And that was level one, so that was the town gates. And you'll notice that there's uh, a bunch of levels in this world. There's more worlds later on. Uh, we gained, uh, you know, 2291 in experience. Uh, gold, we got 544. We had these uh, two levels that we just did. So we got a bunch of experience. We got a bunch of gold. We got a bunch of mana. Defeated enemies. Unlocked treasures. Uh, you definitely want to see if you can unlock all the treasures if you can. There's a bunch of rewards. And we gained the port as a new area. 
We can also see the realm, showing you all the worlds that we'll be able to explore. And uh, there's also the options menu, but we don't really need to see that all that much. There's nothing special up here, I promise. Close this menu, go to the main menu, settings, that sort of nonsense. Okay, guys, I'll see you next time.